Hey, McGuire! What do you want to know? Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't because he's not here now, but if I sees him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons, like in the films. Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. Did anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Marne would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald says he's never been anywhere near the dig. He's having you on, mister. Are you sure Fitzgerald worked at the dig? Oh yes. It was him all right. Would I tell a lie? Well, he denies it. I saw them together only last night. I wish you'd told me that sooner. What were they doing? Pegram gave Fitzy a box. He didn't look too happy about it. I knew it. But how am I going to persuade him to part with it? Break his fingers. Nah, I couldn't do that. I could. Thanks for the offer, kid, but I'll try a more subtle approach. Chinese burns? What's Fitzgerald scared of? Everything and everyone. So I shouldn't have any trouble getting him to talk? He's a pushover. But don't scare him too much. Try the soft touch. Butter him up a bit. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Hello. McGuire says he saw you working at the dig. What's more, he saw you talking with Pegram. He's a little liar. He'll say anything to get attention. Well, it's his word against yours, I guess. See you later. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir? Do you know Sean Fitzgerald very well? I know him enough not to sell him more than two pints. He's like a kid when he gets a few beers inside him. I'm not surprised. He's on medication. For his nerves. There's nothing wrong with his nerves. He's just screwy. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his, by any chance? Oh no, I'm just trying to track him down. Me too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. Did Pegram stay here? That's right. In the best room in the house. That's the one with the bed. Can I see Pegram's room? It's been taken by one of the brothers from the reformatory. They come every year for spiritual refreshment. That's a good one. Their idea of refreshment is a good full of stout. I wouldn't want to disturb a man of God. Especially not a big fella from the bad boy's home. I don't blame you, Mick. That brother's got muscles like a muscle man. Thanks. Hey. Hello there again, mister. Do you know Professor Pegram? No. Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? Here's the science of archaeology, Pat. 
understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavoured condoms, more likely. Is it true that Pegram found a valuable gem? What? First I heard of it. Where have you been, Pat? No. That gem is the talk of every town from Loch Man to Ballydoon. Nobody told me. The lucky sod. So that's why he scampered. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? No. I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of brown coming up. No. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with the boss man. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there. What now? Oh, nothing. Hello. Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. He's seen you there. You might as well admit it. Just my luck. Grasped up by a delinquent and a dimwit. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah. You too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marquet. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I, I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me! Who will? The man from Paris! Jack Marquet! Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Give the package to me. No! Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem.
Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy, Michael. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? No. Not me. Me too, neither. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I, and I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass. But the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy, and hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out, and I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. Did this pixie have a scar on his cheek? I couldn't see. He was wearing a stupid mask. Are you a special agent? Sorry to disappoint you, kid, but I'm not. Did Fitzgerald drop anything when he was hit? I didn't see. It all happened so fast. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. The plastic cover had been smashed by the Pixie's car, revealing a switch. I pushed the switch down, but in doing so it snapped off in my hand. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, how about another drink? See him again? Hmm. Do you serve cocktails? I'll serve anyone with manners and money. No, I'm serious. Have you considered turning McDevitt's into a cocktail bar? Cocktails are chic, cool, and popular with younger drinkers. What? Kids in the bar? Can you imagine it? Pinball, pimples, and puke. Uh, right, I get the picture. I'll settle for a glass of stout. I'm sorry, but the pump appears to be broken. I could fix it for you. I don't think so. This is a job for a professional electrician. Oh well, at least the glass washer is still working. It's not my dear, is it? It just so happens I'm an electrician. Check out my credentials. Well, no. Isn't that marvelous? <laughs> Here's a house bedeviled with faulty wiring of a wayward nature. Here's you, an electric man, with a little plastic card to prove it. Hmm. I still want to see what you can do before I let you touch me beer pumps. You can make a start on the glass washer. And when you finish that, will you take a look at the pumps? No. It was an electrical plug. At no. No. 
I used all my knowledge of electrical engineering to examine the plug. Seemed fine to me. It was an electrical... I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with the machine. I figured it must be the wiring. As soon as the old guy looked away, I grabbed his piece of wire. I replaced the fuse with a piece of wire. I knew it was dangerous, but I was desperate enough to disregard everything I knew about standard safety precautions. Excuse me, Mr. Leary. I fixed your glass washer, no problem. Bingo! And a blessing to all the saints. A free half pint to that man on the house. Now, could you take a look at the beer pumps? Well, I guess so, but I'm not making any promises. If you can't fix them, I'll have a riot on me hands. The pumps are in the cellar, right? That's right. You'll find a flashlight down there somewhere. What a dumb place to store a flashlight. A dark cellar. The only way I was going to find anything down there was to feel around. My hand closed on a long metal rod. I pushed the lever and heard the grating of metal, but nothing appeared to happen. It was a trap door in the sidewalk. I lifted the trap door and an overpowering smell of stale beer rose from the cellar below. I looked down on a stone tiled floor, way too far to jump. Excuse me. There was a nasty feeling in my guts I usually associated with light opera. It was Khan. What's the problem? Did you see what happened here a few minutes ago? What was that? A man was involved in an unfortunate accident. I didn't see anything. What about the boy? Well, he doesn't know anything either. The kid, well, you know how it is in these rural communities. Not enough genes to go around. I prayed McGuire had the sense to keep his mouth shut. Was the guy hurt bad? He's been taken care of, but he thinks he dropped a small parcel. You didn't happen to find it, did you? If I had, I would have taken it to the police. Of course. Thank you. The trap door gave access to the cellar of the bar. Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? I heard that Pegram had found a legendary gem. That's right. It's been the talk of Loch Man all week. You haven't seen the gem, have you? Hell no. I reckon Pegram made off with it. If I was him, I'd go to Amsterdam, chop it up and sell it. He could be living the life of Riley instead of digging holes. Have you ever seen this man before? What a slimy character. No. See you later, kid. Okay, mister.
Then I noticed a flash of light, something sparkling beneath the open trap door. It was Pegram's gem, all right. A large, uncut blue stone. As I held it aloft, I realized the fascination it could command. I guess I was already under its spell. Did you find it? What? Whatever you was looking for. Uh, yeah. Listen, McGuire. I want you to keep this to yourself. No problemo. Just chuck us up a crate of lager. No way. You're not old enough. We can sell it and make some cash. Forget it, kid. I couldn't betray Mr. Leary's trust. I could. For sure. That old misery guts deserves it. If you want to do me a favor, keep a lookout for that guy in the suit. Okay, but it'll cost you a pack of chips. Oh, and shout if you see that Ferrari! It was a calendar with a faded photograph of a prize-winning carp. It was a bunch of cleaning materials. <laughs> 